Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this series, as well as in other videos, we've seen how calorie counting, or the calorie reduction model, does not work for long-term weight loss. And yet, doctors and nutritional experts continue to recommend this course for weight loss. And if a patient wasn't able to keep the weight off, then of course, the experts blamed the patient. Blamed you for being lazy or lacking willpower. But as we've also seen, the body doesn't work in such a way to allow cutting calories to create long-term weight loss. The body works more like a thermostat and has a body set weight. So in this video, we're going to answer the question, what controls the body set weight point? And the answer is insulin. If you give insulin in high doses to patients, it will make them gain weight. And there's a direct correlation between the amount of insulin taken and the amount of weight gained. And this weight will be put on regardless of how much you eat or exercise. An example of this was demonstrated in an experiment involving type 2 diabetics. The researchers increased the amount of insulin in the subjects until their sugar levels were normal. Over the next six weeks, insulin levels were raised. The body weight of the patients increased on average by 19 pounds or 8.7 kilograms, but their daily caloric intake had decreased by 300 calories per day. So the patients were eating less, but still gaining weight. Clearly the calories weren't causing the weight gain, but the insulin was. Insulin is the body's hormonal signal to gain weight. If we increase insulin levels, then we increase the BSW set point. So like a thermostat, this higher set point means the body will attempt to increase its weight. And in order to accomplish this, it will make us eat more or it will slow or reduce our metabolism, TEE. So this means that eating more and moving less is the result of obesity, not the cause. Gary Taubes says it in his book. We do not get fat because we overeat. We overeat because we are fat. Another study in the New England Journal of Medicine studied 708 diabetics who were on oral medications and added insulin to their treatment. And can you guess what happened to their weight as the insulin was given? That's right, it went up. They gained weight. Those who received the highest dosage gained the most weight. Those who received the lowest dosage gained the least weight. Now, some people will say that it's not the insulin that's causing the weight gain, but the treatment of diabetes instead. People do like to argue after all, and especially when you challenge their calorie model. Well, if this were true, then any treatment of diabetes would result in weight gain, right? Well, luckily there have been studies of this kind as well. There are oral medications called sulfonylureas, or SU, that signal the pancreas to produce more insulin. So, if insulin is the control of BSW, then these forms of drugs should increase weight. There's another kind of drug called metformin that's actually an insulin sensitizer, meaning that it doesn't actually raise insulin levels, but instead helps the insulin already in the body to work better. So this form of drug should not affect weight, right? If it's not raising insulin levels, then the BSW will remain unaffected. So the UK study compared the effects of three treatments on weight. There was an insulin group, a sulfonylurea group, and a metformin group. Now, obviously, pure insulin will increase blood insulin levels the most. SUs will increase them slightly, and metformin will not increase them at all. So, what were the results of the study? Well, as we've postulated, the insulin group gained the most weight. The SU group gained weight, but not as much as the insulin group. And the metformin group, well, they gained no weight at all. And there it is, plain and simple. Raising insulin levels causes weight gain. And in a third study, it was determined that the strongest predictor of weight gain is insulin resistance. Meaning, 
It's not calories or willpower, but insulin that signals our body to gain weight. It controls the BSW. Obesity is not a caloric imbalance. It's a hormonal imbalance. So to control the BSW point, the question is not how to reduce calories, but how to reduce insulin. Well, there's a disorder that does that on its own. It's type 1 diabetes, an autoimmune disorder in which the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas are destroyed. This, of course, causes insulin levels to drop extremely low. The notable aspect of this is that these diabetics suffer severe weight loss. And this weight loss occurs in spite of how much one eats. Now, to be fair, while insulin is the main driver of weight gain, it's not the only hormone that affects weight gain. Cortisol can also play a part. Many of you may have heard of cortisol, as it's often called the stress hormone. Now, there's a disease known as Cushing's syndrome that's caused by an overproduction of cortisol in the body. And the notable effect of this disease is weight gain. Okay, so if cortisol, like insulin, can cause weight gain if overproduced, then the opposite should be true as well, meaning decreased amounts of cortisol should lower the BSW and cause weight loss. Well, there's a disease known as Addison's disease in which the adrenal gland doesn't produce enough cortisol. And what's the main effect of this disease? Weight loss. So we can see very clearly from these examples that it's hormones that control weight gain and loss. And that there's a direct correlation between these two. More insulin equals more weight. Less insulin equals less weight. And to a lesser degree, more and less cortisol equate to more and less weight. Our bodies regulate all systems with hormones, and weight is no exception. Once again, obesity is not a caloric imbalance, as you hear from so many doctors and trainers. It's a hormonal imbalance. And so in order to lose weight, we must learn to rebalance these hormones. And we'll continue in this series, as well as my other series, to explore the best and most natural methods for doing just that. And we'll wrap up this video here. Remember to subscribe to the channel and be sure to enable alerts by clicking on the bell so that you will receive alerts when we post new videos. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. Also, if you like this video or any of the videos on the channel, please click the like button as that does really help us out. And as you've probably noticed, this is our new backdrop with some new lighting, so please let us know what you think in the comments. We'll be back soon with a new video in this series about why exercise is not helping you lose weight. In the meantime, you can watch our fasting series here and our low carb series here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.